Welcome to our reflection for the Tuesday of Holy Week. Today we continue in the Gospel of St John, a reading which offers difficult and resonant themes. You're able to read it yourself or in John's Gospel, chapter 12, verses 20 to 36, for a very brief summary. Jesus speaks about how a single grain of wheat falls to the earth and dies and in doing so produces much fruit. He speaks about how we look at life and calls us to follow his way and serve him. He expresses feeling troubled and talks about the events that will happen later in the week when he will be lifted up on the cross crowd who listen don't understand him. He warns them that darkness is coming and urges them to walk in the light. And so I hand over to Alan to read this verse for us. Now, among those who went up to worship at the festival, were some Greeks. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly, I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me. And where I am, there will my servant be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honour. Now my soul is troubled, and what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? No, it's for this reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard it and said that it was thunder. Others said, an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, this voice has come for your sake, not for mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to indicate the kind of death he was to die. The crowd answered him, We have heard from the law that the Messiah remains forever. How can you say that the Son of Man must be lifted up? Who is this Son of Man? Jesus said to them, The light is with you for a little longer. Walk while you have the light, so that the darkness may not overtake you. If you walk in the darkness, you do not know where you're going. While you have the light, Believe in the light, so that you may become children of light. Thank you, Alan. This is a complex passage with multiple themes and ideas. I want to tease out a few thoughts to ponder. 
We hear Jesus stating that his soul is troubled. He knows what is coming, his suffering and death on the cross, all of which is part of his purpose. To have a troubled soul is to feel a sense of unease and disquiet. There is no peace here. I imagine all of us, to a greater or lesser degree, feel troubled at the moment. That internal gnawing fear that everything is strange. That anxiety for those who are ill. That grief over those who have died. That trauma as we realise that everything is uncertain and we have no control. This is soul trouble and Jesus understands it. Soul trouble, as much as we want to flee it or suppress it, presents opportunity. Soul trouble invites us to reassess what matters most. Do we look back and cling on to the life we once had? Or do we choose a different kind of life, which in some ways might feel like a death? The passage we read and our current situation invite us to think again about what matters to us. We are invited to walk in light, to be people who spread light, who are of the light. This is a decision we make, an attitude we choose, to cultivate acts of love, service and generosity. The passage ends on a sombre note. There is warning of coming darkness. Right now, people are experiencing the darkness of sickness, grief and loss. We need to remind ourselves that in the midst of darkness, Jesus is the light of the world, a light which will never be overcome by darkness. What does this mean? Light is present in grief when we reach out to each other. Light is present when we catch a glimpse of the eternal dimensions of God's life and love, which he invites us to step into. There is always hope. Take comfort. And so let us pray. Today, I pray for wisdom, to discern what really matters, to reorder my life around light. I pray for those who are wrapped in the darkness of grief. Show me how to light candles for them in my words and actions. Amen.